Let's say I want to bake out new texture sets for a single texture set that I have on my disk. So let me start by the most uh, basic uh, setup. So what I have, I have downloaded from Megascans uh, new texture set. You can see every text, every file is uh, it is its own type, and I want to do some texture packing and something like that. So first of all, I want to point to this directory inside this HDA. So this is where the directory parameter comes in handy. So we basically just go ahead and copy this path to the uh, to the texture set that we want to uh, source from to create new texture set. Then we have to set the mode. So the mode there are two modes available. So we can uh, take a break out a new uh, new texture set for one. Basically, we can either do it for a single texture set, or we can go ahead and search for multiple texture sets based on the subdirectories of the directory parameter. So if, if this is a batch mode, then we want to point to the directory, something like this directory, where uh, there are multiple subdirectories with the texture sets inside them, like here. So, but, but right now I'm going to uh, focus on single mode. So this is going to can uh, generate only one texture set. Then we want to select where we want to output our the new texture set. So the source is going to be uh, going to be this directory. Basically, whatever the dire directory we point to is going to create a new uh, folder, appropriately name it, and all the new, new textures are going to be uh, put there. But we can also use a custom output, and then we just point to the directory where we want to save our new uh, texture set to, and that's pretty much it. That covers the source file discovery. Then we have a top controls, and if you go ahead and let's say dirty all, and we generate static work items, this is uh, you will see that HDA shows the uh, shows the uncooked work items, and if you click on them, you should get the uh, expected output of this HDA uh, when you when you are actually cooking the output node. So you can see it's going to point to the uh, this directory parameter, and then it's going to point to the uh, to the new directory inside it and the new texture png and it's going to set the uh, tags as its uh, new texture uh, texture types that you set in these parameters let me actually go ahead and cook output node and let's take a look at this directory what's going to happen since i have a source inside here it should create a new directory inside uh, so this is grass dried uh, grass dried okay so in here you can see it has cooked it. You can see we have a new texture set and we have our base color, our normal and ORMD texture pack texture, which is the, uh, which is, I am using for the, uh, for the Unreal Engine uh, Quixel uh, Megascan shader, surface shader with the, with the, which, which stores the ambient occlusion, roughness, uh, metallic, and the alpha channel is going to be a displacement uh, map and all of these maps are set up in this multi-parameter so when you are uh, when you want to specify what textures you want to create you go to this multi-parameter every one of these uh, increasing multi-parameter is going to be a new texture and after that you can go ahead and start selecting the types that hda tool has detected are inside this directory and these types are fetched from the names of the files inside uh, inside this directory. So the name scheme that is uh, naming scheme that is uh, expected for you to follow to pick up these textures is the is the underscore. Basically, the, it's going to pick up the uh, last underscore inside the texture name as its type. So you can see that there can be many underscores, but the last one is going to be separated. So the anything before the last underscore is going to be the texture name and after the last underscore is going to be its type that's going to be automatically picked up by this menu where you can go ahead and select uh, what information you want to uh, want to source from what information from which texture you want to source from so let's say in this one I want to source the base color and then I have to specify which channel from that texture I want to uh, source from so some, for something like a base color, I want to source RGNB from the base color. 
and then I just pick up RG and B channels and that's it. I basically going to recreate the base color texture from uh, from the existing texture set from my source texture set. And then if the extension allows uh, something like a PNGs allows the alpha, we can go ahead and say okay, write alpha. And it's basically the same thing. S uh, select which data to uh, which data to write uh, into, which I am using this ORMD uh, ORMD texture, which is basically uh, I want to write alpha. I want to write a displacement map into it. Then I specify the extension that I want to create. And then I can also use uh, I can down sample my texture to basically let's say I know this is a 4K texture. But I, uh, but I can maybe make it a 2K and render it out or whatever you can at the end of it you will uh, know everything about this HDA you will uh, basically infinitely able to uh, add options for your HDA so I'm going to put it as native another important option is for complementing a green channel which is exclusively used for the normal maps when you want to convert your normal map to the OpenGL or DirectX, uh, DirectX formats. So the difference, only difference between those two formats is that the green channel has to be complemented. And if you know that your, let's say your texture is a DirectX texture and you want to convert it to the OpenGL, you just go ahead and check this um, box. It's going to com complement the green channel. So this, is, this option is exclusively for the uh, normal maps. If you want to create multiple texture sets at the same time, then you want to use the batch mode. So in the batch mode, we have to point to the directory, uh, to the directory that contains other directories, uh, which contains uh, texture sets. So let me delete uh, this baked out texture set from one of these, and I am pointing to this path inside here in the batch mode. Uh, and that's pretty much it. I can generate these static work items. You can see it has show that it's going to create, create three, three texture sets and we can go ahead and cook output node and this is going to create the new textures for each one of these and if you know that you have a and it is important that you have a constant data between uh, between or uh, between all the texture sets that you want to cook out because it's going to reference all of these textures for each one of these uh, texture sets another useful option for this HDA is is going to be the copy unmatched files. So let's say you have your texture set that is also uh, included together with something like a, like a geometry file and you want to copy it to your new texture set together. What you can do is press this copy unmatched files and anything that is not un not matched by this, uh, basically by these file extensions and by the, uh, by the naming scheme that is required you can go ahead and copy those files together. So in, in this case, I have for these uh, for these Megascans folders, I have Megascan text sets. You have these JSON files, and let's say I want to copy them to my new uh, to my new custom directory. Also, so what you can do is uh, copy unmatched files and go ahead and cook output node. Let's open this up. Now let's wait for this to populate. You can see the textures are getting here and these also should include the JSON file. You can see it has included for every one of these JSON files. And that's basically it for the functionality of the HDA. So there are some couple more options that I'm going to go through once we are uh, uh, making this HDA. But overall, you have seen the main functionality of this HDA. And in once, uh, since I have been using it, it has been really great to not to worry about the source of my something like for, from my objects. And I can basically use the single shader something for something like Unreal Engine. Uh, and I do not have to worry about different shaders for different sources where I get my uh, geometry files or textures from. And I did some testing so you can see that Inside here, uh, these plant boxes are from uh, were from uh, Polyhaven. These bushes were from uh, Cosmos. Uh, this was also from Polyhaven. Uh, these flowers were from the uh, from Unreal Marketplace, 
and these grass and uh, and this grass from the by default was from the mega scans so for the grass it's a little bit more trickier because of the vertex painting so you for the shader to work completely with uh, something like grass you need to make sure that the vertex painting is uh, correctly set up for the for the custom uh, folders uh, f uh, flowers or vegetation so i did some testing and did some vertex coloring so now it looks pretty good and obviously you have to work with the data that has provided for you for those textures for because of uh, uh, because of the uh, because of these flowers that i got from the uh, from the uh, marketplace do not have a translucency mask you can see that i do not have any translucency but for mega scans uh, mega scans have trans translucency and the uh, cosmos uh, bushes also have translucency but these do not have so you just have to uh, work on with data that you have and to uh, write out the uh, generic data for something like a translucency let's say shader expects you to have a channel for that i have option to basically write out the custom uh, uh, custom data for uh, those channels for something like a for something like a metallic i know that for my grass textures i do not have a i do not have a metal uh, at all so i can go ahead inst and instead of sampling file i can go ahead and sample constant value and we're going to write the black value inside the metallic channel and you can do it basically whatever the color you want and write it out if you do not have a specific channel that is required uh, by the shader i hope you find this tutorial series useful and let's get to it